Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements 2. This is patch 2.2.5, which I'm calling Prepare for the Future, which is very likely another reused patch name. I know I do that quite frequently because I've lost track of how many patches we've created over the years, but it's apt for this particular patch because this patch is about getting stuff ready for future content. We added some new things to help out add on pack authors and to prepare for some new features that are coming in the future. So before I get into that and show you guys that stuff, of course, we got to thank our patrons. I'm going to shout out a handful of you guys today. If you signed up recently and I didn't have your name on my list, I will get to you in the next video. Um, so huge shout out and thank you to Caden Agnew. That's probably my butcher of the week. Uh, Jake Millward, Joe Neltner, Marshall Taylor, Cody Henderson, Michael O'Haver, and Kenneth B. Marshall. You guys are amazing. And I still, every week, I'm blown away that I have more names to jot down to uh, remember to shout out when I do do these videos. So thank you guys all for continuing to support the project. It's fantastic. All right, let's get into it. Let's go into patch notes. And while I'm getting ready to show you guys some of the new stuff, I will remind you, please download the latest version of Workshop Framework. And those of you who are using the DLC Settler patch that I think I put out last patch or maybe the one before, if you're using that, that did get an update as well. Uh, so the big focus this round of this patch cycle was to improve a few things and underlying systems to help out add on pack authors and get some stuff ready for some new systems we have coming with the 3.0 patch, which I don't have a release date for, but it is something we're constantly working toward. We're starting to kind of merge together our uh, alpha code and our live code into a, into a cohesive whole. So a lot of stuff here that's in the patch notes is just going to be little fixed stuff, or you'll probably see the word uh, add on author as a, as a tag before the notes a lot. So definitely dive into the patch notes. There's a lot of uh, bug fixes and things that might affect you there. So you should go check those out. And if you're an add on author, go check, check, for new tools and toys. I'm not going to go over those right now in this video. I'm going to focus on the stuff that I think everybody will enjoy. And some of that are some new reports. So in the last patch, I focused on adding two new report types that I thought would be particularly useful to everybody. Now I've got two more report types that I think will be useful for those of you who are really into balancing out a bunch of settlements. And for those of you who play in the complex difficulty or the com the, uh, the component complexity, because you guys need a lot of information in order to balance out your networks. And so we've got two new reports, the production report and the operating cost report. So if these are too much information for you, don't worry, you don't you can just totally ignore them. They're not required to play. Um, and I'm going to remind you guys and show you where you can get a higher view of this kind of data from the HUD as well. I'll show you that after I go over these reports. So if we pop into the report section, these needs and plot were added in the last patch. And then two new ones are the operating costs and production. Now, don't be shocked if I've rearranged the order of these by the time you guys get this patch. Uh, this was just the me adding the two to the bottom of the list. So the first one I want to go over is the production report. This one will show up for everybody, whereas the operating costs will only show up if you have operating costs enabled. So production report is going to show you, as it says at the top, the virtual resource and physical item production by plot type and building class. Now, the reason that this was specified this way is because it doesn't actually show food, water, and uh, random junk. And the reason for that is that those are produced by the base game. And it's kind of hard to predict how much it's actually going to produce because some of it's based on leveled lists and others are based on number of settlers. And then Workshop Framework has a mechanic that modifies things. So rather than risking showing you incorrect information, we focused on the SS2 data that I know is exactly what the numbers are and I can fetch them from the, the data structures. So it might seem odd then that agricultural is on this list, but I wanted to make sure that our reports were 100% complete because add-on pack authors can get creative and they do have the ability to inject production that's not part of the base SS2 experience into their building plan. So, you know, perhaps they've created a way for, for their agricultural plots or some of their building building plans on agricultural to produce some resources that we don't on the, on the base classes. And so the report is full featured, even though you're going to find most of your production in the in the expected places, which are going to be under industrial and then both commercial and residential generate caps. And then any of the others there, again, they're just here in case those particular building plans you're using happen to be creating something unique. So for most of you, you'll just go to industrial here to get an overview of the kind of items that are being produced. So when you first click it, it's going to show you the total output for all of that plot type in the in this current settlement. So you can see up at this top there, we have slog. We've got three industrial plots. I happen to know that they are a, a brewery, a distillery, and a magazine printer, which makes sense for our output here. 
One thing to note, if you haven't dove deep into the industrial production pipeline of how it works in SS2, is that the production class plots don't actually produce it in your workbench for you to grab. They actually produce it into the shop types that correspond with that. So, for example, beer and liquor are actually dumped into the uh, shopkeeper output or the shopkeeper, what would you call it, containers, I guess, the shopkeeper wares that you can purchase for the bar. Magazines would go in the bookstore. And uh, antiseptic is actual virtual resource. So if you find that uh, some of these don't match up with the virtual resources you have, it's likely something being injected into your commercial plots. And you can find out where it's actually being injected at the plot level. Uh, if you go to, I'm fairly certain this is the case, I may, be, I may be committing myself to a feature I need to go add now, uh, but you should be able to find the commercial plot that your industrial plots are generating resources for. If you click on, a, on an ASAM sensor on a plot, go to the view report section you can also view production for that individual plot so this is just going to be a report to kind of amalgamate all that data bring it together so you can see at an overview what kind of production you're getting in your settlement and we've got uh, also the ability to break it down by class here you can see if i scroll down i can see that i have one conversion plot to production and i can switch to one of those and just see what's being output by those classes and then at the very bottom if i scroll all the way down i have i can go back to the first screen we started at which was total industrial plots so this whole report uh, will allow you to get an overview and so you can see what each of your settlements is generating quickly the na's down there are because this screen can support up to 10 resources at a time and if if there were more than 10 resources it would paginate and so you would see a next page option and you could cycle through to see all of them unfortunately i wasn't able to just blank out those lines the the uh in order to get that all set up correctly would be quite the feat um and given my limited time to mod every week i decided that the the na's were the uh the were fine enough for this to avoid uh, me burning a lot of hours on something that most of you probably won't care about so though don't mind those na's and the zeros there this just means that you had less than 10 resources to display and if we had say 15 resources then there might be a full page of 10 then when you hit next page there'd be five showing uh, one other thing to mention on this screen is that if you are it will match to your complexity so right now i have this save on component complexity which is why we're seeing antiseptic if you were playing at the default complexity like if you don't know what i'm talking about with complexity you would probably see their rare materials instead if you had my save and then if you're playing on simple difficulty you will just see scrap instead so this does adjust to your complexity settings so you can see exactly what you're really producing now the other report we're going to go back out one more is the operating cost report now this won't be showing if you're not playing with operating costs enabled and this does exactly what you'd expect it does the same thing production report does is it amalgamates all of the numbers for the operating costs for your plots into a quickly viewable report so i'm going to show you guys the pagination i happen to have a lot of recreational here for the test so i can i know that this will fill more than 10 slots on the screen um, but you can see here it's combining all of the operating costs together for my recreational plot so i can see how much it's costing me and if i hit next page i will get the ones that aren't displaying on this particular screen so then you can see there's the others uh, cork through gold they are not unfortunately in alphabetical order i could probably arrange that in the future but it's going to be a mess um, so probably not something i'm going to tackle anytime soon so unfortunately they are just going to show up in the order that they're actually registered in our code um, and uh, that just allowed me to produce these reports in a reasonable time frame again much like the na's we could we could clean these up in time but it's it's the the juice wasn't worth the squeeze yet so if somebody wants to tackle that stuff who knows how to do these things uh they're welcome to uh to submit a a merge for me to uh, patch this in but once you dig into the code and you see how i did this you'll see you'll see why i did it this way uh but still having the data all there is a huge improvement over what we had before and just like the production plot you can go all the way down to the bottom switch back to total and see the well we're already on record you can see it by class and then and switch back to the total at the top so the operating costs and production reports are now available to give you guys even more information now if you were wondering about why we don't have the network total there like we do on some of those other reports the reason for that is that is because that is actually already available if you've ever wondered about this thing on the right the resource panel and how you can get more information out of it if you set up a hotkey if you go into mcm and do this um, on xbox it's probably set up as a hotkey you can set up on the uh the management tool which i can show you guys that in a moment but if we we go over to sim settlements to hotkeys here we go down to the resource panel we can uh cycle the uh the report level here so we're going to go ahead and set up a hotkey on this if i can get my mouse to focus on the screen here we go and then we're going to press k 
and then we cycle to where it shows us the local settlement and the caravan network and it'll take a minute for it to update all of that data there it goes so now we can see on the left we've got our local uh, current stored resources then if we push the button one more time then we get the report you're probably looking for which is the daily change so this will kind of combine together your production and your your operating costs for everything and you can see on the left half is your local on the right half is your caravan network now again this will take just a minute to update it's got to calculate all of this data and there we go so we can see at the local settlement we're net losing uh, 203 scrap 36 building materials 36 aluminum uh, if we go down to organic materials you can see all that broken down but then we're at net gaining overall across our entire settlement network on the right there so uh, if you want to get the overview of your entire settlement and of your entire caravan network you can cycle through the report level in on the resource panel to get all of that information so there was no need for us to redo this work in the uh the uh the terminal i don't know why i just blanked on that i was gonna say i kept wanting to say computer that's a terminal this is this is fallout uh, so for xbox players you have the city manager tools option here and if you go down to this resource panel report view toggle you can use this to bring up a report view which will show you a ton of data just like what i just showed you so xbox players this is how you would get access to that information all right, the last thing I'll show you guys is something with the leader traits. So if you're not familiar with leader traits, if you go to your desk and you choose the, uh, the it's well, I have a replaced city leader here because I already have one, but there'll be a assigned city leader will be an option. This is another way to assign a leader besides just manually assigning them to the desk. And when you do that, you'll be prompted with a barter menu with a few of the leaders that are available. Generally, it's the companions or some named NPCs from SS2 unless you have a leader pack like nobody's leaders, in which case you'll see quite a few different NPCs there. Well, after you select them, you're presented with some information about their traits, the different benefits and uh, weaknesses that they bring to the table that change the rules of the local settlement. Now, after you do that, previously there was no way to view that information, and that is something we've fixed. We've added this new view modifier section, which will show you all of the things that are changing the rules of your settlement. So, for example, Deacon has the uh, major perk of Railroad Ally, which means that railroad agents will patrol and defend the settlement. And we can cycle through all of these. We can see that he's got a weakness. He's a synth sympathizer, so he'll increase the likelihood of synth infiltrating the settlement, etc. And so, all of the different leader traits will show up here for you to cycle through, so you can can see what kind of benefits are happening and you can get that information now one of the reasons that this was really important for us to get in place is because some of the new mechanics we want to add in the future are going to be to apply modifiers based on circumstances so if you do certain things in quests or perhaps your settlement is within range of certain things that we want to give you little modifiers to your settlement to make the whole game kind of work together and, and not make your settlements feel quite so so independent and uh, in the void we want them to feel like they're part of the world and so this is going to be an inter in an entry point for us to do so. One of the most important things for us when we add mechanics is we need to make sure you have ways to view the information, especially for players who really like to get into the numbers crunching and figure out what's going on. We gotta be able to explain what's happening. Otherwise you just have things that feel broken. And so this is just another spot for us to put information, which then opened up the door for some new gameplay options. So excited, what, excited with what that uh, will mean in the future for what we can add for you guys. But uh, that is the, those are the, the big features I can show you guys. Like I said, a lot of stuff in the patch notes to check out. Probably some bugs that have been irritating you have been worked out. And add-on pack authors, there are some new toys to play with. All right, so then end of the patch video here. We always like to give away some merch. So if you'd like a shot at a piece of Sim Settlements merch, I'm going to give you a hashtag. Leave a comment and make sure you include that hashtag. Comment can be whatever you want. Just something to entertain me when I'm reading through trying to find people who left the hashtag. Um, I usually pepper through all these comments the a couple of days after this video goes up, so sometime by Sunday or Monday. And make sure you include contact information as well. Usually uh, your Nexus username or your simsettlements.com forum username. Somewhere I can contact you so that way I don't have to go through a lot of verification steps because otherwise... I've got to try and figure out how to confirm that the person is who they say they are. So if you leave your username with your comment, I know when I'm commenting you, you you wouldn't have lied about your own username there. So uh, the hashtag for today is still more data. I think last week we used more data. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just thinking of something totally different, but still more data. That will be it for this week. And uh, I will get in touch with one of you and hook you up with a uh, code to get some merch off of our merch store. All right, guys, take care and enjoy the mods.